today, the United States has, is the most unequal of any of the advanced industrial countries. And it was that way, you know, say 10, 15 years ago, but we continue to increase our inequality, so the gap with the rest has increased. I think the, the other fact that I think that is uh, uh, so disturbing is that we, our image of ourselves is that we are a land of opportunity, you know, rags the riches. Um, and we all know stories of people, or even know people, who made it from the bottom to the top, immigrants who, who, who came here and, and, and uh, uh, succeeded. But from an economist's perspective, what matters are not those stories, but what are the life chances? What is the likelihood of somebody from the bottom making to the middle, or from the middle making to the top, you know, the, what we call the social, degree of social mobility? And the United States is the least, uh, the country with the least equality of opportunity, again, of any of the advanced industrial countries for which it's data. Very contrary to our image of ourselves. We used to think of, of old Europe as ossified and our society as dynamic and mobile. Not true anymore. After World War II, they realized their problems and they worked to create more opportunity. And meanwhile, what happened in the United States, we went the other way. There is a view, uh, particularly on the right, that uh, this is the politics of envy. You know, uh, don't be envious. Everybody benefits from this inequality. It's called trickle-down economics. You throw enough money at the top, everybody benefits. Uh, the evidence is to the contrary, that while the top has done extraordinarily well in the last 30 years, uh, their share of the GDP has, has doubled. Uh, the top 1% share ha ha has doubled. Um, most Americans today are actually worse off than they were, say, a decade and a half ago. Median income, income of those in the middle, is actually lower today than it was in 1997. Um, and the, the numbers that just came out today from the Federal Reserve show that in terms of wealth, things are even worse. Uh, that this has been compounded, obviously, by, by the housing bubble breaking. But uh, what we've done is been to, for most Americans, wiped out all the savings, increase in their wealth over the last several de a couple of decades. So uh, uh, the picture is not a pretty one. Mm -hmm. The other corollary, there, uh, the other implication of this fact that, that inequality is bad for growth is that it contradicts um, one of the basic propositions of the right. Right says, oh, Okay, we can understand you're concerned about inequality, but the price of doing anything about it, the cost of doing anything about it is too great. If we try to bring down the inequality, the consequence would be that we would all suffer. What I try to argue here is, again, it's just the opposite, that we're paying a very high price for this inequality and that if we took actions that I described at the last chapter of the book that would bring down inequality, we would actually have a more dynamic economy. We would actually grow faster. So we're paying a very big price for this inequality. We've been talking a lot about the extremes at the top, but uh, there are also the problems at the bottom, that the proportion of the population in poverty has been increasing. And uh, there's a problem of the hollowing out of the middle. Uh, the the uh, middle class isn't uh, doing very well. Um, just as an uh, anecdote, uh, I was in India uh, uh, not that long ago, and, and over the front page, uh, they had uh, this article that uh, pointed out that one out of seven Americans are on food stamps, and one out of seven Americans are facing food insecurity, which means they're going to bed hungry at least once a month, not because they're on a diet, but because they can't afford uh, to, to, to buy food. And of course, the reason this got so much attention in India is uh, there, there is a poor country where 
there is a real hunger problem, and it, you can understand it coming from the lack of income you know, of the country. But the United States, there's no excuse for this. You know, there's no reason why there, there are these extremes of inequality. We don't have to have it, and as I point out, it's actually uh, weakening our economy. Now, as you think about each of these parts of the inequality, you think about the various causes, and then you think about how to fix that. So one of the problems at the bottom, uh, and it was brought out by the statistics that came out uh, uh, today from the Fed, uh, one of the problems at the bottom uh, is discrimination that uh, there's some discrimination uh, against all kinds of groups, uh, blacks, uh, Latinos, women, and that lowers their income, and that causes poverty. And that, that, um, the banks, I don't mean to beat up on the banks, but they really deserve it. Uh, <laughs> uh, the banks, uh, a number of the leading banks in the United States targeted financially unsophisticated. They, actively engaged in discrimination. They, they used their toxic mortgages, their bad loans, and focused it on those who were, were uh, 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 various groups, Afro-Americans, Latinos. And you know, this is not just my, my saying this. They have had to pay uh, multi-million multi dollar penalties uh, in settlement uh, of these charges. Well, as I mentioned, uh, the people at the bottom and the middle uh, have lost in this recession an enormous amount of wealth, but the losses of the Afro-American community and the Latinos was absolutely devastating because they were targeted by these bad loans. And so, you know, the uh, people who were aspiring to become, join the middle class now really have had their dreams uh, really dashed. So my, you know, me message. Who owns the, that part of the story? I think it's really important that those in the business community not stop this kind of discrimination, uh, uh, pay decent wages, and, and you know, deal with these, these uh, long-standing problems. I hope that people at the top will realize that it's in their enlightened self-interest to make sure that everybody partakes of the American dream.